three. Hey, good morning. This is uh, Mike Yazena here in uh, of Menorcan Magic, uh, Handmade Cast Nets here in the beautiful old city of St. Augustine, Florida. Uh, what I want to talk about a couple of things today, just briefly. I want to show you this, uh, finish this uh, 10 foot Dacron mullet net because that's what I want to do today is talk about mullet a little bit. And, uh, and anyway, it's it's just a it's ready for. I've got the tucks placed where they're gonna go. Tomorrow I'll take it outside where I gotta hang it out in the middle of my carport out there where it's tall enough because this thing's ten feet <clears throat> where I can uh, secure these things. And you do that with just a series of half hitches on on that lead line. You put a series of half hitches. You keep them good and tight. Then you uh, then you then you cut it off and you. Burn it right, melt and mold that melted nylon into. I use nylon braille lines. You can't get, uh, you wouldn't want to have to pay what it costs you to get a uh, braille line just big uh, out of Dacron. So I use braided this, braided nylon. And you, then I coat it with my, with my nail polish. But anyway, that's what this is. It's a 10 foot, it's, it needs a home. Uh, it's, uh, it's ready to go. It's ready for the mullet run, when, when and wherever that may be. But anyway, that these uh, these things are uh, uh, have gotten extremely popular. Phil's going to run a, a little view up that thing where you can see just how how long it is and just how many knots. I, I still think a lot of people just don't realize you you know you give them a price and they, you know some of them gives them a heart attack and uh, but they just don't realize how many knots if you look at that thing and see how many knots and I hand tied every one of those you know and then of course the, the, the cost of the uh, Dacron is is uh, expensive so with that said I think we'll move right on to uh, uh, for you you folks that you old mullet fishermen probably understand what I'm going to tell you about this morning and that is basically uh, the anatomy of a mullet. There's roughly 78 uh, species of mullet in the, in the waters of the, on earth and, uh, and a mullet is classified as a vegetarian. They, uh, they don't eat meat. Mullet do not eat meat. They eat uh, scum off the top, salt water in the creeks and stuff. You'll see them on top of the water nipping away at the scum floating by and the, the grasses and uh, stuff of that, uh, uh, nutrients and stuff out of the mud is their diet. So, therefore, to digest that type of stuff, a mullet is a, uh, has a gizzard. A mullet basically the only fish, saltwater fish, that has a gizzard, just like a chicken, it has a gizzard. Uh, so that's how they uh, digest their food. It goes in through the gizzard and in one end out the other, I guess. But uh, uh, another thing about a mullet is uh, they have what, well, what we used to call it a gall. It's a gallbladder, but we used to just simply call it a gall. Now the gall is a, is a little sack, liquid sack. It's yellow. And it's uh, basically it's right up at the very uh, top of the uh, stomach, up right up close to the gill, to the gill line. And uh, if you make the mistake of, of cleaning a mullet and cut that gall, you can just you can throw it away. You couldn't eat the fish. If it gets on that meat, it's so strong and bitter you wouldn't be able to eat it. So with with that said, don't bite the only. Only time I've ever cut the gall cleaning the mullet, and I've cleaned thousands of them uh, for smoking, because you you know you just cut them down smoking. You just cut the head off and you cut them down the back. Uh, you pop them open, clean out the stomach and the in internals, and you don't see it. The only time I've had trouble with a with a gall is on a roe mullet, because a roe mullet that uh, you have to cut him all the way up. Uh, to work that uh, row out out the stomach because it, it forms and it's from the back end all the way up to the front end and you have to take and clean it out 
Uh, so there is a chance there. But uh, that's about the only issues with, uh, with cleaning the mullet. Now around this area here, uh, we, I was talking about variety of roughly seven, I think, I think they, they call it 78 different varieties. And if you, if you look it up, it's all different. Cutlass red, and there's just a red mullet of all things. And, uh, this area here, basically, we only have two, two varieties, basically, here. That, in this area that we see, and that's the, actually, it's the black mullet and the silver mullet. Uh, the black mullet, I don't know, they should call it the striped mullet or black mullet. This is the one that's got that really dark back. Uh, and the, that's the, basically the, the mullet, that they stay in this area all, all year round. Now they, they talk about uh, a, a mullet that that they uh, they spawn <clears throat> and they go up in fresh water to grow up and then they come back out. Uh, you know when they get grown and uh, a mullet can live 10, 12 years, believe it or not, and they can attain a weight of uh, 10 or 12 pounds. Uh, I have caught them five and six pounds, you know. Uh, doing the mullet run, but you don't catch very many that big. Most of the time, they're only you know a row mullet runs usually you know three three four pounds, two to four somewhere in that range. And uh, but, but anyhow, they uh, this area we have, like I said, the silver mullet and the black mullet from my uh, where my ancestors come from, the Mediterranean over in uh, the port of Mahan, there in Menorca, uh, they have five different varieties. Uh, in that area there. But uh, basically, what we have, we have just the two. And uh, and that theory about them spawning and, and going up into the fresh water, they stay right here on this coast year round from the time they hatch till they, till whenever. Growing into the little finger mullet and, and, uh, and into the different stages of, of, of growing up and then into the mullet run, which we have. Our mullet run here runs, usually starts sometime uh, in uh, September, depending on the northeasters. We get northeasters, that is when the wind blows like the dickens out in the northeast for three or four days. And uh, Northeast wind is, is, is basically traveling music for fish, especially the mullet. They'll school up and they're gonna head south. And the big mullet run is down South Florida, actually Central Florida. Get down from New Smyrna, probably on right on down the uh, West Palm, down that way. They really, they really school there. You can look up the videos on it, and the tarpon follow, uh, uh, tarpon feast on uh, on mullet, as do as do uh, shark and uh, porpoise, dolphin, whatever you prefer to call them. But anyhow, I don't know. I think I pretty covered that. What I wanted to cover today. I don't want to keep this thing short and sweet. Uh, hope everybody's fixing to have a, a wonderful summer this year. Stay safe, whatever you do. If, if you uh, have any comments, please uh, uh, feel free to uh, comment on the on the video. Uh, if you got any questions. Uh, my email address is usinamike at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Get a lot of little emails from people with questions and comments and things. Uh, and the phone number is area code 904 217 If you're interested in a net, have any questions at all about them. I'd be happy to answer. I've been doing this stuff a long time, haven't I, Phil? You and me have been working together about, it don't, I, time, the time flies, I guess, what, seven, eight years or more. Yeah. That, that he and I, since Phil got interested and learned how to, to make nets, we've been doing this stuff, and uh, you know, basically once a week, we do something. Uh, we may go fishing, <laughs> we may grab our nets and head over to Atlanta Beach and, and around the jetties, and, and, you know, Phil likes to toss his, his nets for, or uh, whatever he can catch, he caught a good bit. One, one day we was over there, he caught a snook about that big, and uh, we had to turn him loose. But anyway, uh, with all of that said, uh, for goodness sake, everybody, 
take care of yourself. And uh, if you've got any questions, uh, comments, or subjects you might like us to talk about, feel free to to let me know. I think I've covered. If you go on, if you go on YouTube, I think I've got a video covering everything there is to know from start to finish uh, on these nets. I mean, to include making sinkers, uh, everything that you need to know. There's something how to put the lead line on it. There's a video on that. There was a question one time about dipping. So anyway, I've said enough. My time is out until the next time. Again, take care of yourself. And, and uh, until the next time, we'll take it easy.